Speaking of Cupertino, typically three things come to people's mind. The Apple campus, really expensive home prices, and good schools. But is that all there is to know about the city of Cupertino? If you are living in the Bay Area or thinking of moving to the Bay Area, chances are you have come across Cupertino for reasons above mentioned. But is that all there is to know about the city? However, there are other things to know about the city before you decide to move here or decide against moving here. Well, in today's video, we're gonna cover all you need to know about the city of Cupertino so you will have a better picture about the city. Now, let's dive in. Now, before we start, my name is Bo Jihee and I'm a Bay Area real estate agent. Welcome to my channel. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit the like button and comment down below or message me and let me know what other cities in the area that you would like me to cover in the future. Also, I have prepared a list of documents that helps home buyers to do research and due diligence on any property they're looking to purchase to avoid the common mistakes. If you're interested, make sure you send me an email and my email is down in the description. I'll gladly send it over. Now, let's dive in. Now, let's briefly touch on the history of Cupertino, which dates back to the 18th century. Originally, the name comes from Arroyo San Jose de Cupertino, which is a creek that runs through the area after American settlement. The city's economy was primarily agricultural, with orchards and vineyards becoming a significant part of the landscape. The region was known for its prunes, apples, and other fruit production, earning it a moniker, the Valley of the Heart's Delight. In other words, Cupertino is already producing real edible apples before Steve Jobs. In the mid 20th century, Cupertino's transformation began with the growth of high-tech industry. The city becomes a part of what was later known as the Silicon Valley. With companies like Apple establishing their headquarters in the city in the 70s, Apple's presence in Cupertino is particularly noteworthy as it has a profound impact on the city's development. Due to it being one of the main epicenter of the high-tech industry in the Silicon Valley and the headquarters of many computer companies and high-tech companies, Cupertino has seen significant population growth and has become an ethnically diverse community over the years with residents from various cultural backgrounds. Currently, Cupertino is home to Apple. Yes, the worldly famous Apple Park, known as the Spaceship, is right on Wolf and 280. As of 2023, the medium household income of Cupertino is nearly 200,000, making Cupertino one of the highest income city in the Silicon Valley. As of 2023, every single family home prices in Cupertino is around $3.2 million. Yes, that is indeed expensive. Now you know the history of Cupertino and why it's so expensive in today's world. The question becomes, why would people still want to move here due to such a high cost of living? Well, this brings us to the third things that Cupertino is known for, which is really, really good schools. All of the public schools in Cupertino are highly ranked from elementary to high school. High schools like Monte Vista, Homestead, Cupertino High, Lindbrook are some of the most competitive high schools in the whole state of California in terms of academic performance. Dienza College is also a very well-known local community college with really quality educations. A lot of the students will go to Dienza College for the first two years for their GE courses and later on move to much bigger universities such as UC Berkeley, San Jose State, and Stanford. The city's commitment to education is a significant draw for the family, making Cupertino always a highly sought after city in the Bay Area, despite the high home prices. Now we know why people want to move and live in Cupertino in spite of the high home prices. But what is it really like living in the city? What are some of the things that can be done here in terms of lifestyles? Well, let's start with the main happening places around town. In the past, the Valco Mall was one of the biggest shopping center in Santa Clara County. It's right on Stevens Creek and Wolf, right next to Cupertino Village and Highway 280. It had a movie theater and lots of retail stores. 
People could often go there for shopping, movies, or play bowling across the street, then go to Cupertino Village for food and grocery. But since the rise of the nearby Santana Road, not only fair shopping center, the Volco Mall has since declined. Today, the area has been demolished, and soon there will be a bunch of new retail and residential projects. Cupertino Main Street has since replaced Volco Mall and become the main happening places around town in terms of dining, retails, and shopping. Right around Lawrence Expressway and Stevens Creek, the Main Street features big retail store spaces and various pubs, wine bars, restaurants, and coffee shops. Places like the Lazy Dog, Heidi Lao are some of the most popular places for food and drinks. There are also a few other retail strip malls right along Stevens Creek from Lawrence Expressways and all the way to Foothill. Featuring various grocery stores, restaurants, and coffee shops such as Gaucho Brazilian Steakhouse, Marufuku Ramen, Marukai Market, Whole Food, Cupertino Squares, and in many more. The Enza Boulevard is another busy street. The road connects Sunnyvale to Saratoga through Cupertino. It features various office buildings and retail shopping centers. From various ethnic grocery stores to restaurants, there are several redevelopments going on along the Enza Boulevard. In the near future, there will be more exciting new commercial and residential happening places coming to the area. There are several great places for hiking and natures, such as Stevens Creek Trail, Rancho San Antonio Reserve, McLellan Ranch, Hunter's Point, all within proximity. You can enjoy some great hiking and beautiful view of the Bay Area. There are also various parks through the city, the most famous being the Memorial Park right across the Enza College, the park features various community events throughout the year and is a popular place for recreational activity such as picnics, swimming, tennis, and many more. Now, let's take a look at some of the neighborhoods in Cupertino and what they look like. Most of the neighborhoods in Cupertino are single-family home communities with various sizes and style of the home. Communities are typically very well maintained with wide street and less crimes. I remember in 2016, when I first moved to Cupertino from San Jose, the first thing that happened to me is my car insurance premium dropped by almost 15% due to the change of address. East part of Cupertino, adjacent to West San Jose, is called Rancho Rinconada. Features a mixture of really old houses with original design and newer and bigger homes right next to it. You would also see a lot of new homes being constructed it is very often that an old home was sold, it would get torn down, and next thing you know, a 3,000 square foot brand new construction would take place in six months. The local buyers love to build new homes, and they know what they're doing too. The neighborhoods north of Stevens Creek, from 85 to Wolf, south of Homestead, borders South Sunnyvale, is what I consider North Cupertino. It has a very diverse element. There are plenty of typical, well-established, middle-class neighborhood with well-maintained single-family houses as well as older-style condos and duplexes. Due to its proximity to streets like Nienza and Stevens Creek, this area attracts both first-time home buyers and upgraders. A Cupertino City Hall area is in the center of the city. The complex features the City Hall, Cupertino Library, community hall, and various coffee shops and restaurants nearby. The neighborhood is mainly newly built townhomes, condos, and retail business centers like the Cupertino Square by Stevens Creek and Dienza. It's quiet and it has high walking score. Cupertino's community center holds various recreational classes and activities from time to time for kids and adults. Whether you enjoy some quiet reading time in the library or socializing with your neighbors at the community center or a cup of coffee in the afternoon while taking a walk around the park, this neighborhood has it all. West Cupertino is west of the Enza Boulevard, including part of the mountains by the foothill. The well-known Monte Vista High School and the Enza College are in the area. The area is characterized by trailing streets and a suburban atmosphere. The lush greenery and well-maintained landscaping adds to the neighborhood's charm. The residents also get to enjoy various outdoor activities such as hikings and cycling. 
with exceptional schools, upscale housing, and proximity to nature. West Cupertino is always one of the most sought after regions of Cupertino. There you have it. Cupertino is a pretty awesome town that attracts a lot of families. And if you're interested in moving to Cupertino, feel free to email me. My contact information is down in the description and let's have a chat. All right. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.